The exotic pet trade is huge, and it's on the rise. There are thousands of videos on social media of people posing with them, and these videos are gaining millions of likes and being shared millions of times. I want to find out why primates are such a popular pet choice. It's hard not to humanize a primate when it looks so similar. Does social media paint the full picture of what it's like to own one? They've seen others that have got these monkeys as pets and they think, oh, well, I can have a monkey as a pet. What impact does being kept as a pet have on the primate? They can suffer both physically and psychologically. These abnormal behaviours that they have are life long. And is it right that you can even own one in the first place? I've decided to go online to see what's being shared at the moment. All right, um, so let's have a look. This is a video of someone bathing their monkey in a sink with soap, um, which, I mean, I don't know if that's good for them. Uh, let's have a look. It looks like this is a, a shop for diapers. This is like an ad for tiny little diapers, loads of different colours, rainbows, pink ones, and it looks like they're for sale as well. Every single one you go up to is more monkeys, different species, squirrel monkeys, capuchins, marmosets, tamarins. Okay, so this has 220,000 likes and it's a baby monkey wrapped around in what looks like a, like a human baby's like blanket. Oh my God. 3.9 million likes, 225,000 followers, all about this guy's pet marmoset. You know, we're not talking about like a few hundred, few thousand likes, 60,000 likes, 200,000 likes, up to a million followers on some of these accounts, and they're dedicated just to their monkey. Massive amounts of comments. Where can I get one? I want one. So cute, so cute, loads of hearts. These people in the comments, they want one. See, it's weird because the thing that naturally comes into my head when I look at it, A, shock, that you can have a pet monkey so apparently easily, and is it right to look after a primate? It'd be really interesting to speak to one of these people making these videos and to ask them what it's like looking after a primate when the cameras are off. Hi guys, and welcome to another video. Good morning, look at those people. Say hi everyone. I'm going to meet recently retired veterans, Natasha and Luke, who run a YouTube channel on their squirrel monkey, Ollie. Having taken him in from a rescue center, they then struggle to find any guidance on how to care for him. So they created their channel to educate others on what it's really like to own a primate, the good and the bad. Hi guys, <laughs> how's it going? Oh my God, I love the background. Is that Ollie in the, in the, in the back there? It, it is. is. That is him. I'd really like to meet him. What are you hearing, bud? Hi. Hello. Hello. Can you kind of describe him to me? Can you tell me a little bit more about Ollie? So Ollie is a three-year-old squirrel monkey and we've had him since he was just a very, very tiny baby. Um, squirrel monkeys are very active, as you can see. They have a very short attention span, only a couple of seconds. So he's like a little member of your family. How, how like, how much does this guy mean to you guys? He is buddy. like having an extra <laughs> child. In his mind, I, I think we are his, his monkey family. <laughs> We're just less hairy and a lot bigger. So why do you think it is that people want to have monkeys as pets? I think initially they, they see them and they're like, oh, so cute. Not realizing it's a 30 year lifetime, all time mm -hmm. commitment. They ultimately fail because they don't understand the, the animal. While Ollie has a rest, I want to find out what some of the struggles of keeping him have been. Has having a primate been anything different to how you expected? Yeah, it's been totally different. <laughs> a lot more time is dedicated to a, a primate versus, you know, a dog or a cat. You know, you got to think about its emotions, its feelings, their diet. Just to get a vet for, you know, a primate is a task in itself. There is no monkey sitter. There is no vacation. Right. It is difficult to get a hotel room when yes. you have a monkey. <laughs> There's a lot of different things, though, that go into it that right. I think I would have told myself beforehand. Do you ever think people couldn't, shouldn't keep primates? How would you answer to those people that say you shouldn't have a wild animal as a pet? I usually tell them you're absolutely right. You do have to have some sort of income because they are expensive to take care of. But at the same time, you can't be working a nine to five job. So it's just situationally 
we have a different lifestyle than 90% no, yeah. of America at this point. They're fun, but they're not for everybody. No. A lot of people aren't equipped themselves emotionally for it because it's hard not to humanize a primate when it looks is so similar. And yeah. Has this behavior that's very similar and can be very human-like. Um, we've had to actually tell people in, in some comments, like, hey, it's, it's still a wild animal. Like it has, it has no frame of reference for what you're mad about in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's it's eye-opening, you know, how people view them. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Having just met two people that actually own a primate, that say the one thing that they think people shouldn't do is own primates kind of speaks for itself. I want to find out what the landscape is for owning pet primates in the UK. According to the government website, it's estimated that we keep up to 5,000 pet primates here. Some require a dangerous wild animal license, but many require no license at all, including marmosets, tamarins and squirrel monkeys. I've decided to take a look online to see just how easy they are to buy. Okay, so pet primate for sale. Okay, not very hard at all. The first link, uh, beautiful marmoset babies for adoption, seven months old, vet checked, coming along with the year insurance documents, uh, potty trained and home raised, available now. All I need is a great home for my capuchin monkey. Monkey that will be a perfect addition to your home. Where are they? So Dorset, Derbyshire, London, Manchester, Berkshire. All of these ads give you no real information like this is a wild animal. It doesn't have any information where they came from. I mean, they look like breeders. These look like people that probably breed them and sell them, but it doesn't have that information on all of them. Scrolling down this site, there's just, I mean, there's endless primates. Page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's just have a quick look. There are 100 pages of ads. I could order this right now. Literally, I reckon I could call this person up. I could probably say to them, yeah, I've got all of the necessary things. I've got the right cage. I've got, I could just say whatever I want, and I could go and pick up a marmoset. So this is really, really, really easy. I'm shocked at just how straightforward buying a pet primate seems to be, with next to no warnings or guidance on just how complex their needs are. What happens when the owners can't cope? Wild Futures is a rescue centre based in Cornwall, which cares for primates who've fallen victim to the pet trade. I'm meeting Sarah to find out what impact being kept as a pet can have on them. How many different species do you have here in the... We have four species here. So we've got woolly monkeys, capuchins, barbary macaques and marmosets. We have 38 monkeys um, on site. Most of them have all been rescued uh, from the UK primate pet trade. Really? Yeah. God, they have a huge amount of space. It's really important to give them as much space as we possibly can. Um, also to give them the most natural environment. Um, as you can see, sort of within the enclosures, there's lots of um, wood. We've got natural substrate on the ground so that um, kind of incites sort of natural foraging behaviours. Oh, look at them go. This enclosure here is um, for our marmosets. God, it looks like a little character from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. So they're really small, but they need a hell of a lot of space. This is huge, right? Yeah. In the wild, marmosets, they're kind of mid-canopy level living um, animals, so they're used to kind of travelling up and down. So we try and give them as much space as that they possibly need. So this is Indy. So Indy was actually a confiscation. She lived alone. Um, she was rescued from a flat in London. Marmosets actually live in breeding pairs or family groups. So for her to be kept by herself for, for so many years is truly heartbreaking. When we rescued her, we also had recently rescued Jerry, who was also kept by himself. We tried socialising them together and luckily it worked, it worked really well and now they're known as sort of the old married couple <laughs> of, uh, of the Marmoset rescues. Sarah shows me the cage that Jerry lived in for four years prior to his rescue, which was kept in his owner's living room. Being kept in a cage this small what are some of kind of the 
the psychological and physical effects that can happen to a, to a monkey like a marmoset. So they can suffer in, in, in many different ways, both physically and psychologically. Physical conditions that we uh, see coming through, monkeys are often suffering from metabolic bone disease, which is like a rickets, severe lack of vitamin D because they've had no access to UV light, which is uh, crucial for, for marmosets. Um, they haven't been fed gum, which again is a, um, a real crucial uh, main part of their, their diet. And psychologically, Jerry also somersaulted a lot. So if you can imagine having this sort of as being as your only space, he still does that behavior now, because again, these coping mechanisms, these abnormal behaviors that they have are life long. Luckily, they're reducing a lot. We've met quite a few of them. Are there any primates here that, you know, you, you try to stay away from as much as possible that have maybe issues that are strong worse than yeah so the group that we often don't have kind of in this sort of as we would describe it kind of our public facing um, enclosures so our weeper capuchins are probably that kind of group we've got um, members in that group that really struggle um, with humans with strangers that can kind of manifest itself in um, anxiety a um, bit of aggression human focused this is all as a result of being kept as a pet do you think people that are considering getting a primate as a pet, if they knew a lot more about the psychological and physical ailments that they get, do you think that would change their opinion? I, w I mean, I would hope so. I'd, I'd hope to think that people, if they learn that this is what could happen, it just comes down to this huge lack of education and understanding. Wild Futures is one of a handful of primate rescue centres in the UK, and they're at capacity often with long waiting lists for yet more owners who can't cope, or for neglected primates that have been seized by the police. I want to know what Sarah thinks is behind this growing industry. What role do you think social media has to play in people wanting to keep primates as pets in the UK? I think social media has a huge role to play. Um, there's lots of videos that, that get shared um, on social media of primates in um, either being kept as pets or in very anthropomorphic settings. And the comment sections just blow up of, I want a primate as a pet. This looks so cool. Basically, I want, I want, I want. Um, and there's no education kind of as to the, the contrary of that. These people aren't bad people they're not purposely trying to hurt monkeys or anything like that it's just they 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 can have it they've seen others that that have got these monkeys as pets and they think oh well i can have a monkey as a pet and there's nothing stopping them so i think without having the the law reinforcing that it, it, it it's very difficult what do all of these primates here mean to you, the ones that you're looking after, the ones that you're protecting? They mean everything. They didn't choose to be here, they didn't choose this life. We've promised to give them a home for, for life and we work day and night to, to make sure that we can, we can do that for them. We just want to be able to do the same for all of the, the monkeys that we don't know about that are still suffering in the trade that basically just keeps driving us forward and giving us that, that I guess energy <laughs> to be able just to continue doing to doing what we're doing and, and, and hopefully get to a point where, where the UK primate pet trade has, has ended. If you're watching social media, it can paint an enticing picture of what it's like to own a pet primate, and it's surprisingly easy to buy one. But these are highly intelligent animals with many of the same needs as us humans. They need space to be physical and they need complex social groups around them. Instead, many end up effectively in solitary confinement or in rescue centres who are doing their best, but are at capacity. There is some hope. Here in the UK, steps are being taken to change the law on keeping primates. In December 2020, the government announced that for all primates being kept privately in England, a new primate keeper licence will need to be obtained in the future, meeting zoo level standards. There's no timeline for when this will be enforced, but we can only hope that it's soon.